Come into my temple. Said the groom, not knowing what to expect. Oh look, my wings are crooked. Now I can fly straight. <laughs> so the song that you're hearing is really about, um, is a follow-up to a song called Reckless Lucy. And uh, Reckless Lucy is about obviously being reckless. And Someone Tamed Reckless Lucy is about Lucy getting married and feeling tamed and not really, know, really knowing what to do with her new and tamed life. So she paints with motorcycle tires. <laughs> Makes sense. <laughs> so this is my aluminum. Um, I have a layer of resin already. I was born in Brooklyn, raised in Long Island, went to my first college in Georgia. Then I went to Berklee College of Music in Boston. And then I joined a progressive rock band. And then I moved into New York City, where I played music for many years. And then I moved to Portland, Oregon, where I made a CD called Two Separate Worlds. And did some touring on the East Coast and the West Coast. And then I quit music and went to school to become an English professor. What? <laughs> I had no idea. Yeah. Yeah. So I oh. majored in English and I went back to college and wow. worked in colleges. Mm -hmm. And then I started getting back into music. But I had always loved photography because um, when I was in a band and I was playing and traveling and touring as a duo, the, my partner was a photographer and we started working on a book together. And then, as most bands do, we broke up and I lost my photographer. So I had to learn how to do photography by myself. And from there I pursued a photography career for about 13 years. And that takes me to last year, about a little bit, like last May, last April was the first time I created a resin piece. Actually, sometimes I can't fall asleep because I'm designing in my head or thinking about some things to do the next day when I'm, I know that I'm going into the studio. And um, I never do them. <laughs> It takes, me, it takes me to another place that feels just as good, you know. Like the it, spa? Like the spa, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Artists, when they're done working, should go to the spa. I, I think there should be an, a spa just for artists. For Spartus. <laughs> Spartus? What's your favorite color? I guess my favorite color is purple. Why? Well, it's healing. My, my ring, I have an amethyst ring, and the amethyst is an extremely healing crystal. And I think purple is, or used to be anyway, somewhat rebellious. It was the, uh, 
It was the most misunderstood of colors. And what size are your shoes? <laughs> shoes are seven. <laughs> All the burning questions. <laughs> Even questions I didn't know I had, I feel like are answered. When I spend time at the ocean, I used to go there all the time with a notebook and I would write most of my songs while I was at the ocean or just journal. There's something about the ocean that cleanses and the infinity of it, that you look out and you don't see buildings, you don't see anything. So there's nothing to think about or, or take in with your eyes other than the infinity and the vastness of it all, which I think really helps clear my mind. I, I think that a lot of the inspiration comes from photographic images as well. Beautiful um, photographic expressions of the landscape or sunrises and sunsets in the ocean that I think get recorded somewhere you know like a sponge and then when like when you squeeze a sponge out and it comes out I, I, I think that's that it comes a lot from there. So your photography you've done that many many years and then recently in the past few years you've transitioned into the world of painting an expression through resin. What does that do for you as an artist to change it up? And why did you change it up? I always thought that painting and things like that were, were for other artists and that was never going to be my thing. All the years of photography are now really being transferred into this new work that I'm creating. It's everything that I've taken in visually photographically is now being um, reproduced in some way, a, 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 you know, an abstract expressionism where um, I think if I was to look and put my photos side by side with the resin pieces I create, there would be, very, there would be a lot of similarities. So tell us about all the awards you've won. The Nobel Peace Prize, the Pulitzer, the Pulitzer, um, the Newberry. I think I once won um, Peabody. The Peabody, and I, I think I wrote. Um, I think I won an award for best shoes. Now you know why. Wow, they're so ugly. They're cute. Look at the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> Are they all blue? <laughs> I it's your blue period. It, it was my, that's definitely my blue period. I'm, I'm getting away from it. It's hard to do that with my love for the ocean. I keep coming back to blue <laughs> and red, which are two opposites, which is right. perfect. But purple is your favorite. Well, because red and blue make purple. It oh. kind of makes sense. <laughs> Does it? Sort of, in, in my weird mind. You and I always talk about, there's no way that we could be as deep and, you know, heavy as we can be without having also the desire and thank goodness the ability to be ridiculously silly and you know belly laughing and make fun of ourselves I mean humility I mean we would be we would be it would be really scary yes humility and you know while I take my art extremely seriously I sure hope that I do not take myself seriously. And I am really enjoying the process of not knowing. It's nothing is definitive, and that's what I like about it. I feel like I've reached a point in my life where I really work on not thinking in a definitive way because everything is so malleable. <laughs> <laughs> and now for a little bit of art speak. <laughs> and I'm extremely grateful to Brittany Davis and her gallery for giving me this opportunity to showcase my work and also my photographic work and it's just so wonderful to have such an amazing gallery to be represented by and an, an incredible gallery owner and I, I mean 
I can't even express how happy I am about this opportunity and grateful. Try. I'm really, really, really grateful. <laughs> <laughs> That's really grateful. You're really happy. I am. I'm, it's like, a, it's definitely a dream come true. The point of making art for me is twofold. On one level, it's about me having to make it. That it's my, it's my refuge. It's my, it's the way that I stay sane. It's my expression of love, anger, um, compassion, desire for a life that's free of angst. I need to do it. it I, whether it's music, photography, or resin, I, I need to create in order to stay sane. It's my drug of choice, for sure. So you've been creating for 53 years. Do you ever plan to stop? I hope not. I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think I'll ever... I, I, I think the day I stop creating is probably the day I'll go to another plane. A plane to Tahiti? Fiji. <laughs> so, is art essential to life? Yes. Art is definitely essential to life. It's certainly essential to my life, but I think that it's, it's been essential to life because it, it's a documentation from the times from hieroglyphics, you know, to now, it's, you're telling a story and then people get to share in that story with you and on, you know, in some ways you're leaving a legacy and a story that people can read slash see for many years to come. What would life be like without art? I don't think that's possible because you can take a walk through nature and all the trees with all their leaves and the bark and the sky and the clouds, they're all art. That's all art. Art is all around us. That's why art is essential in the realm of creating it because we're documenting that beauty, that natural beauty. Being over 50. I'm over 50. <laughs> <laughs> so you're an artist, you're a woman, and you're over 50. What does that look like in the year 2019. What does that feel like? Well, it used to feel really scary because I, I thought maybe it's too late. Um, but now I am so excited because I feel like I feel like tapping into this new realm has been like tapping into the fountain of youth for me, and that I really have the feeling that I'll be spending the rest of my life fe feeling youthful through my art, that it, it actually keeps me youthful and alive and expressive and, you know, so long as I keep not taking myself seriously, um, I think that I'll be able to stay out of the way to, to, to be the muse of the goddess of creativity or or whatever to to come through me. There was definitely a time when I felt like, what am I doing? I'm too old for this. It's too late. You know, I was comparing myself and I had to do a lot of work to stop the comparison, to stop second guessing and just jump in and do it. If you're over 50 or 60 or 70 or 80, I don't care how old you are, it really doesn't matter. Express yourself through art and get sloppy, get paint all over you, and wear it proudly. She wasn't reckless. The truth is, is that I'm just beginning, and 
I can tell you that I wouldn't be surprised if after this phase of art that I'm doing that I do something else and I'm okay with that. When I was five years old, my parents um, sent me to sleepaway camp because we lived in Brooklyn and there was not much to do in the summer. And I walked into that arts and crafts studio and never walked out. And I hope I never do. What? <laughs> <laughs> Message is... Keep making art, no matter what age you are. We need your beauty, we need your wisdom. I'm gonna go put on my wedding dress now. <laughs> How wise. This piece is called The Night. And um, when I quit music for the first time in 2000, I went back to school to learn how to write. And I took English courses. And in my first course, my professor, Joan Myers, at Merrill Hurst University, asked us to pick out a picture in a magazine and right from the prompt, where in the world am I? So I picked a knight and a dragon from a magazine. And I wrote about it and approached it as a triangle. The knight, the steed, and the dragon. Um, the dragon will also be represented on the saber. There's the dragon, and then two dragons over here. and. The way that I interpreted it was, I am the knight, I am the warrior, and the dragons that we slay are those things that get in our way in life, and that we have to unlearn, uncondition. And the steed is our soul. It is the very vessel that carries us through these tribulations. You can call them battles, but they're really tribulations and they're opportunities for us to learn, to grow and um, course correct, if you will. And I am all three of those things. I am the knight, I am the steed, and I am the dragon. Um, because sometimes I am my own dragon that gets in my own way. And I vigilantly have to stay aware of 
slaying slash letting go of things so that I can go smooth sailing, so that I can live life more joyfully. Mm. Awesome. The truth is, it's, it's scary for me to be silly. It's when I'm being most vulnerable, I feel the most vulnerable when I'm being silly because I think that's who I really am. Um, and I have to be really silly because I can be really, really heavy and go really, really deep. So I need that silliness to pull me out of that depth and darkness sometimes. So it's taken me kind of like a long way around to get to the point to recognize that what I need to keep in check and with me all the time is my spirit, my childlike spirit that keeps me exploring, keeps me experimenting, keeps me alive. I mean, really alive. At the end of the day, it's taken me 60 years almost to love myself as much as I do today. It's been a long, hard road, and the thing I have to thank the most is my art, because it has been my best friend through everything. It has been my best friend. The work I create is really a journal of my life, and while I feel like I know myself more today than ever. I know that I am changing. And the comforting thing is that today I love who I'm becoming. And I have the tools and the wherewithal to keep going in that direction. And my art is very much a big part of that and it keeps me it keeps me alive, it keeps me exploring, it keeps me spontaneous, and I urge everybody to hold on to that for as long as they possibly can. The good news is that everything that I learned that I didn't like about myself, I get to unlearn and teach something new that I do like about myself. And I think my art has been my sidekick the whole time and never lets me down never ever lets me down. My piano, or my guitar, or my camera, or my resin, or paint. Um, they are my comrades on this journey, along with lots of really amazing people who have taught me how to love myself. I am really excited and I'm so grateful to be a part of the Brittany Davis Gallery and to be among such great work with other artists and I really am excited to share this work with you. So I hope you enjoy the night, I hope you enjoy the environment and I'd like to thank Rita Ross who made this video, who makes it easy for me to be that childlike silly person and when I'm down in the dumps, all I have to do is send her a text and she'll send something back to make me laugh. And <laughs> laughter is the great healer of everything. I'm grateful for that. Oh, it was a, so fun to film you. It was such a pleasure. I had such a great day. Thank you. You're welcome. Can I borrow that dress? No. Oh. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> no. So if you could sum up art in a sentence, what would you say? Art is an adventure. Anything else you want to add? Someone tamed breathless Lucy Will she ever be the same? Someone tamed breathless Lucy Will she live up to her name? That was me. Oh, <laughs> mystery solved. <laughs>